Amnesty International has re released the results of a multi-year investigation into uh, both torture and mass killings of political dissidents in Syrian prisons over the course of the past couple of years, and the numbers are staggering, even in the context of Syria, where we know well over 400,000 people have died since the war flared up not too many years ago. Amnesty said the executions took place between 2011 and 2015, but were probably still being carried out today. The report said an average of 20 to 50 people were hanged each year at the Sednaya military prison north of Damascus. That's each week. Between 5,000 and 13,000 people were executed at Sednaya alone in the four years after a popular uprising descended into civil war. At that one location, most of those hanged were civilians believed to be opposed to the government, the report finds, although they did have major reports of dissidents or people not complying with uh, orders in the military also being held at that same complex. Uh, Nicolette Waldman, who's one of the researchers for Amnesty International who worked on this report, said that they have actually been dying in massive numbers as a result of repeated torture in combination with the systematic deprivation of food, water, medicine, and medical care. The report is the culmination of a year-long investigation, including interviews with 84 witnesses, including security guards, detainees, judges, and lawyers. And uh, a UN commission, which uh, had access to different data but released a report about torture and mass killings in Syrian prisons, uh, said said that the report that just came out today largely lines up with their own findings as well. Yeah, if, I mean, standing by and doing nothing, for people who thought that that, that would be a way to do this, it's clearly not right. Um, Hafez al-Assad was the father to Bashar al-Assad. These are the kind of things he did, was condemned for them. Um, and, you know, the, these people are murderous dictators, mm -hmm. and there's there's no other way to frame the horror that's going on there. I don't have a cure for it, obviously. Um, yeah. But but which but I think is the, one of the things that led people to think we should just stay out. If the only thing we can do is apparently make it sit worse, idly by. I mean, that's why we just had Holocaust Remembrance Day, right? I mean, that was. Oh, I'm the, just the, devil's the, advocate. I'm not, I know you're devil's yeah. advocate, but we just you just can't do that. Even if you don't have the solution for it. Mm -hmm. There has to be a way to step in and try and stop what's going on. This is this is the most unconscionable thing people are, I mean, this makes Betsy DeVos seem like, you know, yeah. a walk in the park, obviously. Uh, so I, and, and Amnesty, thank God for Amnesty doing this work and, and keeping track, because nobody else is paying attention to it. Yeah, you know? yeah, and going into those places, talking well, right, with people who've actually participated in these acts. Um, and, and, you know, and the Turks are talking about it. We're talking about it here, and people aren't on the news when you turn the news. I love the mm -hmm. news. I'm, I disagree with a lot of the people that are watching this right now. I, I love the news. I watch it all the time. But, but th they're totally wrong on covering this story and um, and it has to be told if it's not mm -hmm. being told because it's not sexy because it isn't Kellyanne Conway and Sean Spicer and then then we're the ones that are losing yeah. and these people are going to continue to do what they're doing well it's interesting that you brought that up because there's actually a quote we don't have a graphic for this but uh, Waldman who we just quoted said uh, the report has gotten the attention it deserved it's a big story but for people who work on Syria it was almost a test case for does the world still care not just about death, but the fact that it was organized. And it, look, it's devastating. I mean, to many people in America, you think about Syria rarely, if at all, and when you do, you think of it as a small country, roughly in the Middle East. The idea that over the course of just a few years, hundreds of thousands of people can be killed and millions others driven out of their country, producing a worldwide refugee problem that we are dealing with, although backing off from as a country, to this day, it's hard to imagine. And uh, I want to read one more quote from... Also hard uh, to imagine that all those people are criminals. Terrible people. All of them are criminals. Every I mean, single one of them. And th this, is, this is a reminder... I'm so glad you said that, because this is a reminder of when we say this that they're running from hell on earth, uh, a hellscape, the worst possible thing that you can imagine. That's what they're fleeing from. This is what we're talking about. We're simply for, dis for disagreeing with the Assad regime, you can be put into, into jail and as we'll see, well, let me just read these quotes. The horrors depicted in this report reveal a hidden monstrous campaign authorized at the highest levels of the Syrian government aimed at crushing any form of dissent within the Syrian population. That's from the Beirut office deputy research director. But look at how they describe the way that these hangings are, are carried out. Amnesty's report, Human Slaughterhouse, says prisoners are moved in the middle of the night from their cells under the pretext of being transferred. They're taken to the grounds of the prison where they're hanged, likely unaware of their fate until they feel the noose around their neck. These are people who are held in horrible situations, lied to about what's going to happen to them, and then brought and killed. And those numbers are devastating per month and certainly when you add them up over the course of a few years. 
As a result of this data coming out, representatives of some of our allied countries have spoken out against the Assad regime. Boris Johnson, who we're not necessarily any big fans of here in the U.S. or especially in the Young Turks, said, uh, sickened by reports from Amnesty International on executions in Syria, Assad responsible for so many deaths and has no future as leader. And uh, the former prime minister of France and current foreign affairs uh, advisor, I believe he is, says Amnesty has documented the horror in the prisons of the Syrian regime. This barbarity cannot be the future of Syria. So France and the UK uh, speaking out on this, notably absent any commentary from our valiant new leader of the US because while uh, Donald Trump has time to speak about the ratings of reality shows, he doesn't have time to talk about 13,000 people being killed in mass executions. Notice, notably absent also commentary from Vladimir Putin, probably because he supports and props up the very regime carrying out these attacks. Might be that there is a link between the, the two leaders of major countries engaged in Syria not having anything to say about the Amnesty International report. Yeah, it's a good point. The Putin point is a, is a good point. And, you know, Trump, listen, uh, there's time to say everything. You can make jokes about Arnold Schwarzenegger and do that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you can't do it at the expense of covering stuff like this. And you can't do it at the expense of, of talking about the Quebec uh, bombing, which he hasn't done. You know, yeah. and, and so... I don't care when they talk about silly stuff. There are people and people talk about silly stuff sometimes. But but they have to focus on what's really important, and they're not doing that at the same time. And and this is a serious, serious problem, and, and we are all indebted to Amnesty International. So yeah. They're just so important. Doing great work, incredibly uh, dangerous work. Um, yeah, and when, I mean, when you think about the, the, the scale of the problems that we, we, I mean, we very often hear inside of the U.S. context, we'll talk about uh, the level of focus given to, say, terrorism and people's concern over terrorism and how when you look at the things that kill people in America, how disproportionately we focus on some and not others, regardless of how many people are actually put at risk. But when you look at this, I mean, how many terror attacks do you have to add up to get to 13,000 people, probably largely innocent of any crime, uh, being killed? And aside from Amnesty International, the UN, and a little bit of news coverage, largely the world looks the other way and isn't even willing to take the people who manage to get outside of Syria, let alone actually resolving the, the problem in Syria, which is the Assad regime, in addition to a number of other groups operating inside of Syria. Become a TYT member and you get all the shows on the network, including Aggressive Progressive, the most progressive show there is anywhere. Check it out, tytnetwork.com slash join.